Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome you to the city of refuge in Jesus' name. Here the Savior awaits you. The healer awaits you. The deliverer awaits you. And the one that will bless your life and bless your family awaits you today in Jesus' name. It's going to be a great day for me. I said for me. It's going to be a great day in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our time together here today. Thank you for this special worship. Thank you for our members. Thank you for our invitees, our friends who are here today. I pray, Lord, today everyone will have a taste of your power in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you have raised us up for, coming to this world, we pray, Lord, that today we'll see the beginning of a great fulfillment in every life in Jesus' name. As your people enter into the city of refuge, protection for everyone. Preservation for everyone. Salvation for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Dominion for everyone in Jesus' name. Bless your people today and feel every cup to overflow you. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath thee are the everlasting arms. He shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heavens shall drop down dew. Also, your heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy hell, and who is the sword of thy excellency, thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. The Lord is assuring us today that he is the everlasting King of kings, everlasting Lord of lords, and is the everlasting God, eternal God, and he is a refuge, our hiding place. It tells us in Psalm 46. Psalm 46, reading from verse 1. In Psalm 46, reading from verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. God is your refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear. Anybody afraid there? Therefore, will you not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is the midst of her. Our God is mightily present here today. Our God is by your side over there. Any problem, any challenge, he'll roll away in Jesus' name. And more than rolling problems away, he'll fulfill his will in your life in Jesus' name. You heard about Josiah. It had been prophesied more than 300 years before he came to this world. 
and what was determined by God concerning him was fulfilled. You are not an accident in the world. You are not an accident on earth. You are not an accident in the church. God brought you here so that his will for you before you were born, that will will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. You need him as savior. You need him as protector. And you need him as the one that will fulfill everything that you have ordained for your life and you will in Jesus' name. The spite God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early your help has come. The heathen reached and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The God of Jacob is my refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh waters to cease unto the end of the earth, and breaketh the bow, and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in fire. All weapons that are formed against you are burnt in fire today. Be still and know that I am the Lord. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Today we are looking at the word of God on a subject the great refuge for young, old, and all believers. The, the great refuge for young believers, for old believers, for all believers. He is your refuge today. And you are going to find every need of your life will be supplied even today in Jesus' name. Every problem solved, every challenge removed, every difficulty melted, every mountain taken away, and all those things that have stood before you and your destiny, the Lord will take everything away today in Jesus' name. In the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 6, New Testament, Hebrews chapter 6, and here reading from verse 17, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed age by an oath, that by two immutable things in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we have a strong consolation. I have a strong consolation. I have a strong confirmation. I have a great confidence who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. There's a hope that is set before us. We're laying hold today. There's a destiny that is set before us and we're laying hold today. And we come and we flee unto him and we come to him and he is our refuge. In verse 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, but sure and steadfast, and which entereth in into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Today, as we look at the word of God, we see God as our refuge. We see God as the one that protects us. And we see God as the one that is fulfilling the reason why he brought us into this world. And he wants to fulfill a destiny in your life. He will in Jesus' name. And you see, we need to start from early parts of our lives. For the children, 
for the youths, for the young adults, and for the adults, for the fathers and the mothers, and those who are very much aged. It is not too late. If you have not started today, you are going to start. There's going to be a new direction, a new focus, a new passion, a new strength, as God brings you to the fulfillment of why you are here in the world. So we're going to start from the early age, from young people, and then we come to middle age, and then we come to those who are far advanced in years. Everyone today, we're having the touch of the Lord in our lives in Jesus' name. Three points we're looking at. Number one, early conversion and consecration to God, our eternal refuge. We found people in the Bible that were converted early, transformed early, and they became useful in the kingdom of God very early. Point number one, early conversion and consecration to God. Early conversion and consecration to God, our eternal refuge. Point number two, earnest commitment and covenant with God, our everlasting redeemer. Earnest, not sluggish. Earnest, not lukewarm. Earnest, not cold. Earnest, not superficial. Earnest commitment and covenant with God, our everlasting redeemer. Point number three, Earning confidence without counsel from God, our enduring rock. It's the rock, it's the refuge, it's the redeemer, it's the one that stands there, it's a shield, it's a protector. And we need to have confidence in him and we need to have his counsel. Every step we take because he knows what he made us for, he knows what he wants us to achieve. He knows the direction he wants our lives to take and we need to consult him and we need to inquire from him and we need his counsel. We have confidence in God and then we have counsel from him. Your life will be fulfilled. Point number three, erring confidence without counsel from God, our enduring rock. Number one is early conversion and consecration to God, our eternal refuge. As we talk about these things, they look like theory. When you don't have a practical, personal handle on the subject, that's the reason why we take uh, the man, young man, young child, Josiah, for a handle on this area of early conversion and consecration to God so that it will be your eternal refuge. I said it will be your eternal refuge. I said it will be your eternal refuge. Look at Second Chronicles chapter 34. Second Chronicles chapter 34. I'm reading here from verse 2. He said, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. You can't do that without conversion. The old nature will not allow you to do that without conversion. And the thing that stands behind you, pushing you, will not allow you to do that without conversion. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. The natural man cannot know the will of God. The natural man cannot follow the will of God. The natural man cannot do that which is right in the sight of the Almighty. What happens then? A person realizes, I want to do right. I want to go the right direction. I want to fulfill the right purpose in life. And he says, by myself, I can do nothing. In my strength, I can do nothing. In my struggles and trials, I can do nothing. And then you turn from yourself. You turn from your sin. You turn from society. You turn from your own struggles. And you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, make me a different person. Make me a new person. That's what you're going to do today. Strength will come from above in your soul. Salvation will come from above in your spirit. And when that conversion has taken place, though you are young, though you are old, you begin to do right. 
I said you'll begin to do right. The Spirit of God will come into your heart. And the Spirit of God will lead you and direct you. That is the right way. That is the right path. And you're going to follow that right path. I said you will follow that right path. Look at this, verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in the ways of David his father and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. There's something I notice about the life of this converted Josiah. And there, are, there are some words you need to take note of. Now you see when we're talking about words, pardon me to explain this to you. We have some young people here. There are verbs, there are nouns. A verb is a word of action. It sets you in motion. A noun, like a stone, is just there. A noun, like a wood, is, to, is just there. A noun, like a chair, is just there. A noun, like a bench, is a noun, is just there. There's no movement, but a verb is a word of action. And as you look at Joshua, you see verbs in the verses concerning him. And the verse he is talking about uh, Joshua, talking about Josiah rather, is uh, the, the verbs, they lead him to repentance. The verb, they show his conviction. The verbs, they show his cleansing. In the verbs, they show his righteousness. The verbs show his consecration. The verbs show his uh, submission. And those verbs show the absolute surrender that man had towards God. Let me show you. Look at this in verse 2. He did as a verb action, doing something, getting up and doing something. He did not only thinking, he did not only meditating, he did. He looked at life. He said, if there's anything going to change, somebody must rise up and do it and change it. Anything in my life, if anything is going to change, I cannot just sit down there. I must do something in my family. If anything is going to change, I must do. In my community, if anything is going to change, I must do. And in the nation, it's not, it's not good enough reading about it, complaining about it, and wondering about it, and blaming everybody else. If anything is going to happen, if I'm going to be a reformer, if I'm going to be a transformer, if I'm going to be a person that turns things around, I cannot just see that and be waiting for somebody else to do something. I must do. You'll be a man of action. You'll be a woman of action. I said, you will be a man of action. You know, whatever we know in the head, whatever knowledge we have, the man read the book of the law. And he brought the book of the law to him. But it's not good enough just reading, not good enough just hearing, not good enough just listening. He heard and he did something. You can begin to think about it now. You will do something. In this life, you will do something. Am I talking to somebody there today? Look at this in verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he watched. That's another verb. And that, that's somebody that is leaving one place and going to the other place. Action, action, my brother. And he walked in the ways of David his father. He declined not. That's another verb. He declined not, neither to the right hand, nor to the left. But look at this now. I'm reading to you from verse, verse 3. For in the eighth year of his reign, when he was uh, just uh, uh, 60 years of age, while he was yet young, underline that here, Bible, while he was yet young, early conversion, early consecration to God, our eternal refuge. While he was yet young, he began another verb. He began, that's another verb, you must begin. You know, I'm thinking, I'm meditating, I'm planning, that's not enough. He began to seek after the God of David, his father. And uh, in the 12th year of his reign, when he became 20, he began. You see that? At 16, he began. That one is going on. At 20, he began. There's always something to do. Always something to begin. Look at your life. 
Look at your environment. Look at your community. Look at your office. Look at your community. Look at your state. And look anywhere there's something to begin. I can do that. I must do that. I must get up from here. I must turn that around. I must change that. I must transform that. I must reform that. He began. He had begun before, but now at another new project, he began to purge. That's a verb. That's a verb. To purge. That's a verb. If anything is going to be clean, somebody will make it clean. If anything is going to become righteous, somebody will turn things around. He began to put Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the calf images and molten images and they break down. And they break down. Somebody must have the courage. The things that ought not to be there. It's a verb to break. The things that ought not to be there, that should not be there. And somebody establish it, you break it down. That should not be over there. Somebody establish it there. A verb in your life, a break down the altars of barely. In, the, in his presence and the images that were on the high, on the high above, he caught down. That's another verb, caught it down, caught it down. Look at your life to start with. If there's going to be a revival, there's something to break down there. There's something to cut down there. There is something to sweep out, out of that life. And then you say, he cut down the grooves and the carved images and the molten images and they break and they break and they break in pieces and he made dust of them and he strode another verb he strode it upon the graves of them that are sacrificed unto them he didn't leave a work up done he didn't leave any project up done he didn't leave an idea flowing in he said the idea came the vision came. The revelation came. Something has to be done. And he went to work immediately and he got it done. Look at verse 5. He burnt. You see the different verbs in the life of the man, in the reign of this man. He burnt the stones, the bones of the priests upon their altars. He cleansed. That's another verb. The man, he was into action. It wasn't just, you know, sitting back and sending people. Sitting back, go and help me do that. Go and, I'm still young. Go and help me look into that. I'm still young. Go and help me remove that thing there. A man of action, he was there. He was there. And all the people that work with his father, all the people that work with his grandfather, all those who are still alive, even though they appeared resistant, lethargic, and lukewarm, he sprang into action. He burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars, and he cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. Look at this, look at this, verse 7, verse 6. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh. Then he went to the cities of Ephraim. Then he went to the cities of another tribe, Simeon. He went to the city of another tribe, Naphtali, with their mattocks found round about. And then he goes on to tell us what he did. And thank God it's now your turn. And thank God it's now my turn. Where we'll serve the Lord. I said we'll serve the Lord. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 now in the 80th year of his reign. He now becomes 26 years of age when he had purged the land the, and the house. He sent a shepherd, the son of Azaliah and Measiah, and uh, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Joash, the recorder, to repair, to repair, to repair. He's been looking at every side. You see, there are some people like there are like cakes on torch. One side is overburnt. One side is overcooked. The other side is still raw. But this man, Joshua, now a young man, 26 years of age, he looked at every side, every side, every side. That one needs touching. That one needs reformation. That one needs renewal. That one needs revival. That one needs refreshing. And he touched everywhere. Now he said so that they will repair 
the house of the Lord is God. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, now we have a shepherd carriage the book to the king and brought the king what back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servant, they do it. It was a man that was supervised. If he was if he delegated anything at all and he sent them, he was expecting a feedback. He was expecting, is it done properly? Is it done appropriately? Is it done to the standard? And then we look at verse 19. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that a wrench is closed. You see that action, action. Anything he was to do, he stood up. And he did it. Anything you are to do from today, you will stand up and do it. The power will be given to you, stand up and do it. The courage and the strength and the stamina you will receive, you will rise up and do it in Jesus' name. You will not allow a day to pass without walking in the direction of fulfilling the destiny and the will of God for you. You will not lose any day. I said you will not lose any day action somebody shout action somebody tell me action you'll be a man of action you'll be a woman of action and what needs to be done you will do credibility well in jesus name you see how that man started he started young look at ecclesiastes chapter 12 ecclesiastes chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 open your bible Men of action, are we in the house? Women of action, are we in the house? Boys and girls of action, are you here in the house today? God will raise another Josiah over there. Another Joshua over there. Another Samuel over there. Another Ruth over there. Another Esther over there. You are going to be the one that will turn this nation in the right direction in Jesus' name. They say you are future leaders. Let's remove that word future. You are present day leaders in Jesus' name. Joshua did not say, Joshua did not allow the people to say, Joshua, Joshua, you are young, eight years of age, you are a future leader. No, you are not a future leader. You are a present day leader. Present day leaders. Am I talking to somebody there today? Your life from the present time will turn things in the right direction in Jesus' name. Look at this, look at this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Remember now. When are you to remember? Remember now. I said, when are you to remember? Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not. Not the years draw near. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, your light will shine. The sun will shine upon you. And the cloud of the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, that day has not come yet, it's still long time coming. And the strong men shall bow themselves at the grinder seas because they are few. And those that look outside, the windows shall be darkened. That your sight is still blind. It's a bright. Your sight will remain sharp. Your sight will remain focused. And while you are young and you can see, while you are young and you, can, you are strong, while you are young, you can move here and there, get something done, get something done, because time is going. I'm talking to somebody there like Josiah. I said I'm talking to somebody there like Josiah. Look at verse 4. And the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the board, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, that there has not come here, but you know, it will come. At the time somebody becomes so old, and all these things happen, and it says the Atmore tree, shall flourish 
the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and the desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets, or ever the silver cord be loosed, and the golden bowl be broken, and the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then is a time of death now. It's not come yet. It will come eventually. Before it comes, you will do what the Lord has appointed you to do. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. But now, before that time, I said before that time, from today, men of action, I said from today, women of action, I said from today, how are you going to spend your life? Let verbs, words of action, fill your life. Look at verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You are young. The Lord will keep you young. Young in heart. Young in strength. Young in power. Young in vision. The amens are going down. And you are going to do something as a young man. Look at First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14. First John chapter 2. Verse 14. I have written unto you fathers. Yes, there are fathers. There are mothers too. Because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Now I have written unto you, young men. I can almost tell you to stand up or don't stand up. I can see you there. I have written unto you, young men. The Lord is talking to you today. This life will amount to something. This person here will do something. Vision. New vision in your life. Passion, new passion in your life. I preach you know, to young men because, 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 I'm waiting for you, because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. Anything that stands between you and the achievement and the purpose of creation you clear out of your way from today in Jesus name you're strong I am strong let the weak say I can do all things what are you I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I can almost see I'm following you about in my mind, side. I'm following you about. I see the vision concerning you. And I follow you about. Everywhere you go, I see success waiting for you there. I see power waiting for you there. I see achievement waiting for you there. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It will strengthen you. Point number two, point number two, earnest commitment and covenant with God, our everlasting Redeemer. Earnest commitment and covenant. Let, let's come back to this young man. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 34. Second Chronicles chapter 34. And I'm reading from the start of one. Second Chronicles chapter 34, reading from verse 31. And the king stood in his place. It, it's difficult to just pass by, pass that by. Find your place and stand. I'm talking to you. I said, find your place and do what? Stand. Don't let any other person replace you. You see, something happens to you in life. When you become irreplaceable, irreplaceable, when you become indispensable, you have a role, you have a place, you have a duty, you have an assignment. Don't ever entertain the idea 
if I don't do it, others will do it. Don't ever entertain that idea. We're so many. Yes, we're many. Your face is unique. Your calling is unique. Your life is unique. Your calling is unique. Nobody looks exactly like you. Even your twin brother, even your twin sister, even identical twins, nobody is exactly like you. You have your place, you are going to stand. I'm talking to somebody there, you have your place, you are going to stand. This man stood in his place. Find your place. I said find your place. Find your role. Find your calling. And find the special place the Lord has called you. Verse 31. And the king stood in his place. And he made a covenant before the Lord. He made a covenant. He said, now I find my place. Somebody said, give me a place to stand and I will move the world. You have the place already to stand over there. I said, you have a place to stand over there. The Lord has placed you there and the Lord has positioned you there. Find your place, stand there, make a covenant with the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes and with all his heart and with all his soul to perform that's a verb that's a verb you find the verb everywhere in this man of action to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book and of course he influenced the city and he influenced everywhere now Earnest commitment. I'm looking at, I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 1. Reading here from verse 1, Hebrews chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed, earnest heed, earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Uh, can you, you hear what he's saying there? He's saying, now you picture yourself, not as you are today. You picture yourself, how you are going to be when you reach the end of the road, because you are reaching there. You will not stop your journey halfway. You will not stop that project halfway. That calling of God upon your life will not stop halfway in Jesus' name. A reformer, yes, you will be. A transformer, yes, you will be. A restorer, yes, you will be. A repairer, yes, you will be. A conqueror, you will go overboard, you'll be more than a conqueror. But he's saying we ought to give the more earnest heed. We must be earnest. You know what that means? Fervent. Fervent. There's nothing that, you know, they say, cool down, brother. They say, no, I'll cool down when I get to heaven. But now, I must be fiery. You must be fiery. That's an honest person. That's a person that is up and doing. You are honest, you are fervent. You are honest, you are fiery. You are honest, you are devoted. You are devoted. A man of action is a man of devotion. He is devoted to carrying something out. He is devoted to getting something done. You are honest. You are zealous. You are zealous. Don't you see the comment about the Lord Jesus Christ? The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Find your place. Find your calling. And don't let anything go down the rain, anything go lukewarm, anything go haphazard, everything just go down, and then you cannot do anything. It's like they tie your hand, every chain, every cord that ties your hand is broken today in Jesus' name. It's like you know you're moving somewhere, you're getting somewhere, and then they put a rope on your legs, and then you're tied down. Everything that ties you down, that you're not jumping up, you're not rising up, you're not moving, everything is broken today in Jesus' name. Look ahead and see the vision. Look ahead and see the destiny. Look ahead and see the achievement. And the Lord says, be earnest. Be earnest. You're earnest and you're passionate. You're passionate. You're not, you know, a so-so believer. 
You're not a lukewarm believer. You're not a sluggish believer. You're not a retarded believer. You're not a backward believer. You are passionate because you are earnest. Not only that, you are passionate, you are prompt. You are prompt. There is something to do. No procrastination in your life. Begin today. I said begin today. I will do it later. I'll do it later. That's the language of failures. That's the language of the people who are backward. That's the language of people who are lukewarm. They, they cannot gather themselves up. And they cannot say today is the day. The beginning of greater things in my life. I know today is your day. I know this month is your month. I said this month is your month. Fresh anointing in your life. Fresh power in your life. And fresh unction in your life in Jesus' name. Be earnest and be prompt. Be earnest and be obedient. Be earnest and be uncompromising. Uncompromising. What does that mean? Don't compromise with yourself. Your brain, because of what has been stored in your brain, you're not a fast person. Know yourself. You're not a quick person. Know yourself. It's your brain. You're not, we don't know you. People don't know you as an excited person. They know you as a gentle, slow, sluggish person. Your mind will tell you that. Don't compromise with that brain. I said don't compromise with that brain. The greatest compromise is compromising with yourself. Protect yourself. Don't compromise with yourself. Preserve your strength. Don't compromise. All the, you just got well. And you just got up that bed of affliction. Go slowly. Be gentle on yourself. Don't run so fast. Don't let people accuse you of seeking this or seeking that. Don't compromise from that idea. The place to start and to say, I will not compromise, is with yourself. You will not compromise. And then, when other people around you, when they try to slow you down, quiet you and shut you up, you will not compromise. I, I know for myself, I will not compromise. It says, be earnest. What does that mean? It means be a flame. Be a flame. A flame. There's a fire that is burning inside you. Be loyal. Be faithful. And be wholeheartedly separated from every form of evil and every form of falsehood. That's what it means to be honest. Come back to that again. I'm reading to you from, uh, uh, from this Hebrews chapter 2 and in verse 1. Therefore, because we have a place we are going, therefore, because we have something Christ has mandated for us, therefore, because our Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer is gone before us to prepare praise for us, Therefore, because we have all the angels around us and they're supporting us and we're going to reach where we're going. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should, not, we should let them sleep. They will not sleep. They will not sleep away from you in Jesus' name. I'm coming now to Jude, verse one, chapter, chapter 1, verse 3. Jude, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you, and to exhort you that ye should tell me, that ye should tell me, earnestly contained for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I want to remind you that those early believers, they were earnest believers. Those early apostles, they were earnest apostles. Those uh, people, young and old among them, all the believers of the old, of the olden days, of the New Testament, they were men and women, boys and girls, once they became believers, they were earnest, earnest, earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And the same zeal will come to you. The same passion will be in you. 
and the same excitement and the same devotion will come to you in Jesus' name. Uh, let, me show, let me show Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 41. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And if you are hearing this for the first time today, it's penetrating your soul. It is penetrating your spirit. And you receive it as yours in Jesus' name. And the same day, they were added unto them. Tell me out aloud. About 3,000 souls. Look at this. And they continued. How? And they continued. I said how? And they continued. Tell me out aloud. How? Steadfastly. And that's another word for earnestly. They continued passionately. They continued excitedly, and they continued zealously, and they continued uncompromisingly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and in prayers. The apostles gave them the word, and those people, let me just show you this, all those believers, when we say earnest, earnest, somebody help me shout the word earnest. When you are earnest, you, you know what happened? They came under apostle, the apostles' authority. The apostles' authority. And they will not come out of that authority. They said, this kind of authority and this kind of power, I'm going to be under this authority. They were under apostolic authority. Not only that, they manifested apostolic boldness. They were bold. They were bold. They saw those apostles. They saw the boldness in them. They got that boldness. They received that boldness. And every doctrine, every teaching you know, that those apostles gave boldly, earnestly, passionately, they accepted everything. These people, they continued in apostolic consecration apostolic consecration as they looked at the apostles and the apostles gave up all they also gave up all as they looked at the apostles and they went everywhere preaching the word they also went everywhere preaching the word they had apostolic authority apostolic uh, boldness apostolic uh, consecration apostolic doctrine and it says they they continued in the apostles doctrine they didn't say i like this i don't like this i accept this i reject this everything the apostles gave they were earnest about it i want to be like that apostle you'll be like an apostle i said you'll be like an apostle ah you don't want to be an apostle and they continued in they did apostolic exploits, exploits. Look at Philip, he wasn't an apostle. Philip of Acts chapter 8, he went to Samaria, he did apostolic exploits. Look at Stephen, he wasn't an apostle, they just got it. They said, if the promise is true for him, the promise is true for you. I said, it is true for you. Apostolic authority, apostolic boldness, apostolic consecration, I was waiting for an amen. Apostolic doctrine, apostolic exploits, apostolic faith and faithfulness. I said apostolic faith and faithfulness. The faith of the apostles. They didn't say, well, I'm not an apostle. I don't need to have that kind of faith. The apostles had prayed, increase our faith, and their faith had increased. And they went to the name of Jesus. Every one of them, they went to the name of Jesus. And when Peter said in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, what happened? He rose up and walked. I pass it on to you. The faith of the apostles, I pass it on to you. You know, those apostles, when they said, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, we told you not to do this. They said, you judge whether to listen to you or to listen to God. But they said, what we have heard, what we have known, what we have seen, that we're going to do. Apostolic faithfulness, I pass it on to you. Apostolic faithfulness, I pass it on to you. 
apostolic grace and godliness. It says the grace of God was upon them all. Upon them all. The grace of God in those apostles and the godliness in those apostles, they were earnest and they were fervent and they were steadfast and they were passionate and they all got that grace and that godliness, apostolic heart for holiness. Those apostles had a heart for holiness. And all those people, as they were getting converted, as they were getting yielded to the Lord, they had apostolic heart for holiness, apostolic integrity and incorruptibility. You couldn't corrupt them. You couldn't silence them. You couldn't make them sit down. They stood up in their place and they went on like a mighty army. And now look at a mighty army here today. Incorruptible. Say amen. amen. And you will not compromise with the world in Jesus' name. They had apostolic joy in persecution. Anybody persecuting them, you know, they thought, looks like I'm attracting attention. If you were not attracting attention, people will just leave you alone. People will not hinder you. People will not persecute you. And they said, I'm so happy. I'm a person. Look at the Pharisees. Look at the Sadducees. They leave their siege and they leave their synagogue and they are running after us and they lay hold on us and they put us in the prison. They said, we are attracting attention. You will attract attention. I said, your life will attract attention. When they attracted the attention of the scribes and the Pharisees and they put them in the prison, they attracted the attention of heaven. Angel came from heaven and opened the door. There's, go, there's going to be explosion. There's going to be commotion. They, 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 they take you because you attract attention and they put you in the prison. Angels will pay attention to you. And then they came from heaven and brought them out and they said, go into the temple and speak all the words of this life. You can tell their joy, apostolic joy in persecution. Their apostolic knowledge, apostolic knowledge of kingdom mysteries. The kingdom of God, having all the kingdom mysteries, the joy of that and the privilege of that. That's why then they add apostolic love and apostolic loyalty. Apostolic love, apostolic loyalty, apostolic might and apostolic might. Apostolic might apostolic might and they had apostolic nurture and nourishment every day every day they were taking in the word of god stronger and stronger they were as you take in the word of god every day you'll be stronger and stronger in jesus name they had apostolic obedience and apostolic occupation apostolic obedience and apostolic occupation apostolic purity and power purity and power they had it you shall receive power i'm talking to somebody there you shall receive power i'm talking to somebody there you shall receive power when the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth earnestness earnestness you are earnest in the things of god and you have apostolic quality of never quitting apostolic quality of never quitting they're coming for you they're coming for you let them come and waiting for them they will take you from here let them come nobody can take you from your place stand firm Plant your two feet in the place of responsibility. Have the apostolic quality of never quitting. I will not quit. Say it. I will not quit. Let Satan hear. I will not quit. Let the angels of God hear. I will not quit. They add the apostolic quality of never quitting apostolic righteousness and renewal. Renewal. Every day, day by day, as they looked at the face of Jesus in their quiet time, in their morning devotion, they were transformed from glory to glory. Apostolic sanctification and submission. 
and then apostolic trustfulness and trustworthiness you can trust them if you go out to that place you can trust them peter is preaching somewhere if you go out the other place philip is preaching somewhere if you go out the other place tv is preaching somewhere you can trust them i trust you i said i trust you more than that heaven is trusting you this watch will not die from your mouth they add apostolic uprightness and usefulness apostolic uprightness and usefulness apostolic value apostolic virtue they add apostolic weapons apostolic wonders they add apostolic yieldedness and they add apostolic zeal i pass everything on to you in your soul i pass everything on to you in your spirit i pass everything on to you honest 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 you are honest i said you are honest you are fervent in jesus name you are zealous in jesus name and this word of god will never die out of your mouth Look at Psalm 119, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 60, Psalm 119, verse 60, it says in verse 60, I make haste, repeat that after me, I make haste, I make haste, and delayed not, are you there, and delayed not, to keep thy commandments you will not delay i said you will not delay from today you'll be a man of action you'll be a woman of action from your young age to the middle age to the old age a man of action in jesus name earnestness upon your life zeal upon your life passion upon your life and the power of the Lord upon your life in Jesus name now let's come to point number three point number three this will not happen to you but I need to read it to you because you know a man of action ought to open his eyes his two eyes while he's walking there's a pitfall there you will not fall there there's a ditch there you will not fall there and there is a match that is spread on a big hole there you will not walk on that match and there is something there where other people have fallen where other people have crushed their bones where other people have been destroyed you will not be destroyed in jesus name but coming to point number three now Erring confidence without counsel from God, our enduring rock. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 35. Second Chronicles chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse 20. Second Chronicles chapter 35, reading from verse 20. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, he has done something good, is restored, proper worship is restored, righteous worship, Neko king of egypt came up to fight against kakemish by euphrates and josiah went out against him and he sent ambassadors to him saying what have i to do with thee go and stand in your place what have i to do with you recall your calling what have i got to do with you recall your assignment what have i got to do with you go back home and go and do what the lord has raised you for you will not waste your life on non-essentials you'll not waste your life on another man's business you'll not waste your life on just you know the pride of the earth i want to i want to stand in your place nobody will take your place but you know but you know but you know when you vacate your place and you leave your place before it's time to leave and you have not finished another person comes in after you have left your place you will not leave your place you will not leave your marriage I said you will not leave your marriage you will not leave your family you will not leave that place of work you will not leave your assignment 
But you know, Josiah left his place. And eventually, he died prematurely. And another person came to take the place when he was not ready. Because Josiah should not have left. You will not leave. Anytime you get tired, get in touch with somebody who has, who is still standing, tell him to come. If you can't get hold of them, come get hold of me. I said, if you cannot get hold of them, come get hold of me. I will stand with you. God will help me to strengthen you. From the little experience and the much experience of God, when you are getting tired, and even if you send a letter, you send an email, or you send whatever it is, and you get hold of me, I'll be all available for you. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will empower you. And everything that is missing in your life, the Lord will supply in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I came not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste, forbear, forbear thee from meddling with God, who is with me, that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, ah, Josiah, what did you do this? A man cut out for greatness. A man cut out for achievement. A man, he was sidetracked. And he went astray. You'll not be sidetracked. Look at verse 22. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but he disguised himself. You're not a person to disguise yourself. We know who you are. You are in. You have dominion. We know your place in the kingdom. Stand in that place. You don't have to disguise yourself. You were named before you were born. 300 years, more than 300 years before you were born. And who knows how many years before you in particular. Here this morning, before you were born, who knows how many years the Lord had been having his mind on you. Are you here? Amen then. He disguised himself that he might fight with him. And he hearkened not to the words of Nico from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at him. What is the protection? And the archers shot at him. He left his place and he left the protection of the eternal rock of the everlasting rock of the eternal enduring refuge and the king said unto his servants have me away for i am so wounded negative confession will never come out of your mouth say in the right place keep on doing the right thing and be with the right people and fight the good fight of faith don't fight a battle which is not yours your life is preserved in Jesus' name. And his servants therefore took him out of the chariot. I don't want to finish that sentence. You don't need it. I said I will not finish that sentence. You don't need it. I said you don't need it. Life. Abundant life. Eternal life. Surpassing life. Strengthening life. A righteous life, abundant life, prolonged life for you in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 33, verse 24. And of Asher, he said, Let Asher be blessed. That's yourself there. Let him, let her be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. You'll be acceptable. Let him dip his feet in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like the God of Jeshurun, who rides upon the heaven 
in thy hell, in the excellency of the sky, the eternal God, the eternal God, the eternal God is thy refuge. Underneath thee, underneath who? Underneath you are the everlasting arms. It shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. And shall say, destroy them. Israel shall dwell in safety alone. Whatever is happening around you, you will dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, my brother. Happy art thou, my sister. Happy art thou, my son. Happy art thou, my daughter. Who is like unto thee, O people, sage by the Lord, the shield of thy hell. And who is the sword of thy excellency? Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Amen. Amen. Three times, Amen. Sub night of one. Sub night of one. Sub night of one. Psalm 91, reading from verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You'll never leave that place. Your salvation, you'll never abandon that salvation. Your place, you'll never leave your place. This city of refuge, your church, you will never abandon the city of refuge. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Tell me what can touch you under the shadow of the Almighty? What can crush you under the shadow of the Almighty? What can stop your progress under the shadow of the Almighty? Everywhere you go, a shadow will follow you. His strength will follow you. His power will follow you. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Are you saying that? He is my refuge. He is my refuge. My fortress, my fortress, my God, in He will I trust. Surely, surely, your enemies are liars. Persecutors, they are liars. And those who say they will bring you down is a lie. Surely, 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 He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. From the noisome pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou, thou, thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night. It will not come to you. Nor the arrow that flieth by day. Not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand, a thousand, you believe that? A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But, but, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes thou shalt behold and see the reward of the wicked. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee. Angels will be your bodyguard. Angels will go before you. Angels will surround you. Angels will be guarding you from behind. 
For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. As you are going to school in all thy ways. As you are going to walk in all thy ways. As you are going to the exam hall in all thy ways. I see the result you are bringing back. Success. Victory. Upliftment. No tears in your eyes anymore. Verse 12, it shall be at thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. Because, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. You'll be head, you will not be tail. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me even this morning. He shall call upon me and I will answer. He has answered your prayer. You are going back home with that answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. Look at this. Hold on. Hold on. If your teacher said they will honor you, thank you, sir. The principal of the school said they will honor you. Thank you, sir. But you got information. They wrote to your principal that the president of our country said he will honor you. That one is higher. Now, the God of heaven, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Redeemer, our refuge, our rock, said he has singled you out today. And the everlasting refuge said, I will honor him. You are honored. I bow the head. I dub the cap for you. I said, welcome, sir. Welcome, man. Heaven has honored you today. With long life. With long life. With long life will I satisfy him. He will show you something. He will show you something. I will show him my salvation. Where is the honored brother? Where is the honored sister? Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, the everlasting refuge, the everlasting redeemer, the everlasting rock is here today. He wants to honor you. He wants to honor you. He wants to honor you. Why don't you tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. If you are not saved yet, if you are not born again yet, tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I surrender. The Savior is awaiting you. The Savior is waiting for you. He wants to forgive your sin. He wants to cleanse your life. Believer, child of God, the Lord is waiting for you. He wants to honor you today. He wants to honor you today. He will answer your prayer. He is a balancing refuge. And you want to become a man of action. A man of action. A woman of action. Your life will be filled with purposeful action. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Come to the Lord. Come. He's expecting you. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. is waiting for you. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. He'll preserve your life. He'll protect your life. He will honor you. His honor has come upon your life today. What a great honor. What a great honor. And surely, surely, you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. No more evil. No more heartache. No more curse, no more yoke. I 
a refuge, a redeemer, our rock. Be earnest, be passionate, be zealous, be excited about living. And be like those early apostles, those early disciples, earnest, earnest, with apostolic earnestness, authority, boldness, consecration, doctrine, exploits, faith, faithfulness, grace, godliness, heart for holiness, integrity, incorruptibility, joy in persecution that to attract heaven's attention, knowledge of kingdom mysteries, the love, the loyalty, the might and the might of the Lord, the nurture the nourishment of the apostles, obedience, occupation of the apostles, the purity, the power of the apostles, the quality of never quitting, never, never, never turning back, the quality of never quitting, Righteousness, renewal of the apostles, refreshing of the apostles, sanctification of the apostles, submission of the apostles, the truthfulness of the apostles, the trustworthiness of the apostles, uprightness of the apostles, usefulness of the apostles, the weapon and the wonders of the apostles. Tell the Lord that same earnestness. Lord, I have you today. Have you today. The expression of seal, yieldedness, seal of the apostles. Oh Lord, here I am. From this day, from early life, I'm going to manifest the earnestness in consecration, in commitment, in covenant unto the Lord, confidence in the Lord, or the counsel from the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, today is the day of victory, a day of new beginning. Forget the past, begin. No procrastination anymore, begin. Lethargy, uh uh. Lukewarmness, uh uh. Stress, power, anointing, unction, freedom. All the yokes are broken. All the things that tied you down in the past, they're removed. Now you're free to act. You're a reformer. You're a repairer. You're a restorer. Tell the Lord, I stand in my place. I stand in my place, a man of focus, a woman of focus, a boy of destiny, a girl of destiny. Stand in your place, nothing to shake you, nothing to frighten you. Nothing to move you away from a place of action, purposeful action. 
discover why you are here on earth. Begin. Begin. And let every day have a new verb that describes your purpose for life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the mighty army of Conqueror said, Let's bow and eyes closed. We're going on a journey of victory, success, achievement. And we don't want to leave anybody behind. We don't want anybody in the service here today. Had I known, had I known, I would have given myself to Christ. Because today, a new journey is starting for everyone. And I see this mighty army, every face will be crushed before you. Every hindrance, every heel removed before you. Yeah. Nothing stands in our way now. Yeah. There's an army of conquerors. Yeah. And we don't want anybody left behind. Eyes closed, heads bowed. You have not done this before. You want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So that he can be your savior, your redeemer. He can be the one that comes to your life and he gives you eternal life. And a new life begins today. You raise up your hand, you just say, I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. Anywhere you are, anywhere you are. On the ground floor, thank you, God bless you. Thank you very much, God bless you. Raise up that hand. At the gallery, raise up that hand. Here am I, Lord. I give myself to you. Today, I begin a journey with kingdom power, kingdom authority. The other gallery there, thank you very much. God bless you. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Heaven is waiting for you. Heaven is watching for you. I'm going to pray for you now. In your own heart, turn away from your sin and say, Lord, Christ is my Savior from today. Christ is my Savior from today. Christ is my Savior from today. He has answered your prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that all these people forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Bring eternal life into them. Grant them grace for salvation in Jesus' name. And the grace to go and live in newness of life. Beginning from this very moment, grant unto every one of them in Jesus' name. Confirm that salvation. Confirm that restoration in every life right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Now a mighty army. Are you part of that army? I said, are you part of that army? You will be a strong soldier of Christ. A militant achiever. Militant reformer. Militant repairer, militant restorer in Jesus' name. Every day of your life, there will be purposeful action. The Spirit of God will speak to you. The Spirit of God will direct you as to how and what you are going to do. And you will not fail. You cannot fail. In your personal life, there will be a renewal. In your family, there will be a renewal. In your profession, there will be a renewal. In your community, you are going to clean up that community. Am I talking to Conqueror? Am I talking to Reformers? In your community, you will be a Reformer in Jesus' name. The mountains you never thought you would climb, you will climb. The journey you never thought you would take, you will take. 
The achievements you never thought you will have, you will have. And the place you never thought you will get to in this nation, you will get there in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. There's no failure here today. There's no captive here today. There's no sick person here today. Fulfillment is coming in your life. Father, in Jesus' name. I present every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, every man, every woman here before you today. Lord, I pray any sin that's standing in their way, I pray you take away in Jesus' name. Begin in their soul. Begin in their spirit. Begin in their mind. Begin in their emotion. Begin in their brain. Begin in their inner man, and then their body, their flesh, their eyesight, their hearing, their speaking, their bones, their joints, and then their family, their home, their houses, their cars, their transportation, and then in their office, that room and that office, and then in their market and then in their village, and then in their town. Lord, I pray, let there be a cleansing everywhere in Jesus' name. Anything in any corner, anything hidden somewhere that would have hindered them, cancel them in Jesus' name. Wash them, cleanse them, touch them, Protect them with the blood of Jesus. And I pray, captivity of Pharaoh will not keep them down. The fire of Nebuchadnezzar will not burn them. The occultism of any one of the magicians will not catch them. Burn every cord that binds them. Destroy every yoke that comes upon their lives every part of their body from the top of their to the tip of their toe healing in Jesus name freedom in Jesus name deliverance in Jesus name dominion in Jesus name prosperity in your life success in your life joy in your life Achievement in your life. Promotion in your life. And the power to be a reformer in your life in Jesus' name. The strength to stand. The courage to stand. The ability to stand. Standing in the place that God has ordained for you. Come upon you in Jesus' name. The spirit of the conqueror go with you. The power of the conqueror go with you. The provision for achievement go with you. And from now on, every day, a day of testimony. A day of action. A day of achievement. As the record of Jehoshaphat came in the book, the record of David came in the book, and the record of Ezekiah came in the book, and the record of Daniel reaching in the book, and the record of Peter Paul reaching in the book, and the record of Josiah reaching in the book. God will write a good report concerning you. In his book, in his book, the whole world will reach. They will eventually hear. There goes a man of achievement. There goes a woman of achievement. Men of conqueror. Men of achievement. Men of achievement. Men of action. Women of action. 
and achievement the Lord make every one of you in Jesus name the mark of the Almighty is upon you as you go no evil eye will hurt you no evil hand will hurt you stand in your place you will achieve confirm each in every life Lord we thank you because we know you have answered Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.